Hello, good morning. It's my pleasure to be back with you in another science session. Today is Wednesday, May 6, 2020. Our lesson for today is titled A Day in the Life of a Thermal Energy. And our teaching point for today will be I can describe the duties of a thermal energy. So that means that today we're going to be taking a look at what a day in the life of a thermal engineer is like. We're going to be taking another look at what their responsibilities are but also the different concepts that we learn and how he applies this. I encourage you now to pause the video and get to copy the date, lesson name, and teaching point in your notebook just before we continue with our question of the day. Now, in our question of the day, we have, what is the ability of a material to transfer heat? We actually took a look at this answer, actually at the concept that answers this question in our last session. So what is that one? I encourage you yet again to pause the video and give it a try. If you did that, let's continue with our answer. So that concept is thermal conductivity. So what is that basically? So thermal conductivity is the ability of a material to transfer heat. As simple as that. The ability of a material to transfer heat. Now, this is called thermal conductivity. Materials that conduct heat easily are good thermal conductors. I remember that we had the opportunity to take a look at conductors when we were discussing electricity. But this time again, we're taking a look at conductors from the heat perspective. Materials that conduct heat poorly, that means that they limit the conduction of heat, are called thermal insulators. So we have conductors that actually are good to transfer heat, and then we have insulators that actually prevent heat to be transferred. All right, so we continue on our module energy transfer, where we had the opportunity to take a look at four main different types of energy transfer. We discussed light, we discussed sound, we discussed thermal energy, we discussed what else? Electricity, there you are. In our lesson four, we have been all talking about heat, trying to answer the essential question, what is heat? This is going to be our last lesson our last meeting regarding to this lesson. So with this session right here, we finish this module right here. So going back to our teaching point, I can describe the duties of a thermal engineer. So what are these? So let's take a look. All right. So if you go to your book on page 75, you will find our STEM connection. A day in the life of a thermal engineer. So let's take a look. What is a thermal engineer? All right, so a thermal engineer, or as a, ser or as a thermal engineer, you're supposed to maintain, create, repair different systems that involve a heat transfer process into other forms of energy. As we already know, energy can be transferred but this actually cannot be destroyed nor created, but this only change in the form that is being manifested. So this heat that we've been talking about can actually be transferred in different ways. So basically thermal engineers get to manage or use this property in our advantage. So let's continue with this one. Now as a thermal engineer, you analyze how mechanical heat sources interact with different physical and industrial systems. As you can see right here, you see a lot of machines, a lot of uh, materials, metal, and all that kind of stuff. So basically, he takes a look at the thermal conductivity of these materials and how he can organize this, arrange this in such a way that the property of this material allow us to have the better or actually the best cooling and heating system that we could possess. Now as a thermal engineer, you test, in this case test meaning getting to try different components, different machines to see if they actually work as we were expected or as we designed to, all right? So you test various components of heat transfer 
within a system, which sometimes involves chemical fluids and gas. You may work with large or small scale heating or cooling equipment, from industrial heaters to airplane engines. Other duties and responsibilities require, require you to work in locations in need of heat or cooling mitigation, right? So there are times that we need uh, some devices to actually get our environment um, cooler, or sometimes where we need another device to actually warmer. For example, in those countries where winter is really cold, probably over here we only need an air conditioner the whole year. Other duties and responsibilities require require you to work in locations in need of heat or cooling mitigation, as I just said, such as a power plant or landfill. Aerospace companies, public utilities, and other industrial firms hire thermal engineers. So these are three main industries where you can find thermal engineers. Now, as a summary, these guys basically design or use their knowledge regarding to thermal energy to design heating and cooling system. As I mentioned before, a heating or cooling system are systems that actually provide heat or provide coal in the case that we need to. All right? As they design and test these different systems, they keep in mind the conductors and the insulators. It is to say those materials that are good that are good to actually convey heat and actually keep or retain cold. Right, so what else do we do? What actually do they do? Right, so buildings are well insulated and energy efficient. I remember when we talk about um, light bulbs, when we have these power saving light bulbs, and we were discussing about, about being energy efficient. Being energy efficient means that the energy, or actually to make the best use that we can to the energy that we're getting from our environment. It is to say that the materials that we're going to use are going to be organized and used in such a way that allow us to provide the best use that we could get, all right? Not actually losing energy. Because in the case of electrical energy, let's say, that couldn't cure to waste of money as well. All right. So this diagram right here shows the temperatures in different areas of the house. Right here on the roof, you may see that it's pretty warm. I could say that this is the warmer temperature in this house because it actually receives all the solar rays that are coming from the sun. So at 75 Fahrenheit, as you can notice on the windows, we have sort of the lowest temperature that we could find in this house that are about 72 degrees. Fahrenheit as well, right? So now we imagine that I'm a thermal engineer. As a thermal engineer, I have studied this building and labeled the different temperature I detected, as you can see on the different components, on the different parts of this house. This observation can show where heat is and actually being lost from this building. Using the data collected, I can make adjustments to the heating system and insulation. This helps reduce the amount of thermal energy transfer that occurs. This also helps reduce the energy needed to keep the building warm in the winter and cool in the summer. All right. So since we already know a little bit more about thermal engineering and the duties, and we already spoke about electrical engineer, and we actually had the opportunity to see how concepts as um, conductivity, insulators, and conductors were actually related in both uh, scenarios, so both electrical and thermal. How might an, an electrical engineer and a thermal engineer work together? What do you think about that? I would love to hear you as you develop this question in your notebook. All right, this is like a hood activity that we're supposed to try 
If you take a look at the folder in the portal, you will find a PDF that will take you to this Kahoot activity. If you weren't able to join us live, give it a try on your own and so you can actually enjoy this activity with us. All right. So our second activity will consists of completing the review pages that we have on pages 76 and 77. Right there, we have four, actually five different questions regarding to this lesson that we just worked on. So you basically go over the whole lesson, making sure that we're ready for our lesson check that we're expected to have on Monday. Right, guys, that will do it for today. I hope that you have enjoyed this lesson. If you have any other questions related to thermal engineers, let me know and I will gladly answer those questions. It was a pleasure me have been here. So I hope that you're doing well and see you next time. Bye bye.